Well, as we watch these pictures, let me introduce Elena Korosleleva, who's a professor of international politics at the University of Kent, and thank you so much for coming in. Uh -huh. In terms of that visit, a lot of attention on the Americans, on John Kerry. We are told those travelling with him have been told to expect some sort of sanctions package in the coming days rather than weeks. Realistically, what is it that you think is, is going to be on the agenda here in terms of some of those economic sanctions? Well, I'm actually very glad that um, the response from the international community is kind of speeding up because at the moment, of course, the situation is of very grave concern about what is happening in Crimea, what kind of consequences for Crimea, for Ukraine broadly, but also for the former Soviet space and so on. And uh, obviously um, here uh, we could talk about all possible um, diplomatic um, uh, interventions, including obviously economic sanctions. And this is something that I hope the, um, well, the um, member states, uh, governments, uh, but also United States, they will be able to consider very seriously and very soon. And yet, in a sense, they're facing a brick wall at the moment. You will have heard President Putin early in the day even denying mm -hmm. formally that these were Russian troops on the ground, talking about a humanitarian mission, mm -hmm. talking about the need yeah. for, for yeah. why potentially Russia could act. Yeah. It doesn't seem at the moment like the pressure is working. Mm -hmm. Well, the situation actually uh, really needs to be untangled here because at the moment, obviously, there are troops on the ground. We're talking about 16,000 troops. Uh, the new, actually, new ships arrived yesterday uh, from Russia surrounding uh, uh, Crimea. And what is very important at this stage, um, actually, is to see what the um, OSC mission actually could come up with this kind of fact uh, fact-finding exercise because it is important to show that there is no immediate threat to the Russians there, or to the, more to the point, to the Russian-speaking population, which so is about 50% in Crimea. So to almost to give the Russians mm. a, a way out here. And I, I suppose yeah. this is something that you're watching really closely, personally, isn't it? I mean, Indeed. your father is Russian, your grandmother is Ukrainian. I mean, when you see the events that we've seen over the mm. past couple of weeks, well, <laughs> what have it, you been thinking? It is in... The, Internally, it is, it is personally, it is very difficult because, after all, when you look actually at Belarus, Ukraine, even Moldova, um, after the Second World War, uh, given the disastrous consequences of the war, a lot of people actually uh, from uh, sort of deep parts of Russia were moved in to help, and as a result, um, there are a lot of mixed families, like my family, for example, my father being Russian, all the way actually from Far East. Uh, uh, from uh, ust Balsheretsk, and my mo mother is Belarusian, and my grandmother was actually from Ukraine. So how would you tear these kind of families apart? And I think Ukraine is exactly in that kind of situation where we need to allow Ukraine to d decide th by themselves as an independent and sovereign nation. Well, thank you so much for coming in to talk to us. Very thank welcome. you.